Hey, Cornerstone Kids. Welcome to Cornerstone Kids at Home. I hope you're having a great summer. I'm so excited you're here with us this week. We are going to be worshiping together. We are going to be learning memory verses, and we're going to be hearing some great Bible stories. So before we get started, let's go over our core values. Number one, love God. That's an easy one. We love God because he loved us first. Number two, love people. That's a little bit tougher because, you know, People are flawed, and sometimes they do things we don't like, but we are commanded to love them anyway. And the third thing we need to do is to love life. We live in this wonderful world that God created for us, and we need to look for the good in everything. So have a great week, and make sure that you're out there loving God, loving people, and loving life.
me to shine, makes me come alive, makes me wanna live my life for Him. God made me to shine, makes me come alive, makes me wanna. Hey Cornerstone Kids, are you ready for your memory verse? On your feet! Remember, I'll say our verse once and then we'll say it together. Ready? Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalm 145.3 NIRV. Now, let's say it together. Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalm 145.3 NIRV. Great job. Now have a seat and get ready for this week's true Bible story. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cornerstone Kids at Home. It's been an incredible month. We've been discovering how creative God is and seeing how he made us to be creative. It's pretty great to know that we're made in God's image because, well, God is great. God's love is so amazing, I can't stop telling everyone about it. He made everything we can see. Everything he created is wonderful and good. Everything he created is indescribable. give for a peanut. What's up everybody? It's me, Jacob, and today we're getting creative with light. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you were made in God's image. And God could tell you a thing or two about light. It was the first thing he created after all. Let there be light. Oh, no, too bright, too bright. Did you know that light can travel at 186 thousand miles per second. If you were in a spaceship, it would take you three days to get to the moon. Light can travel to the moon in about a second. Fly me to the moon. Let me bump it in the stars. And never... You can use light in all kinds of creative ways. Not only can you make shadow puppets, <laughs> you need light to take pictures and make videos. This won't do at all. This is terrible lighting. Lights! No, no, down, down with the lights. No, too bright. Thank you. You can use lights to make a concert more exciting. You can even use light to communicate. S-O-S, -S. need help. I'm out of Chocolate, sad emoji. I don't actually know Morse code. In today's story, we're going to learn about another use for light. In fact, we're going to learn how you and me can be the light. I can make a bee. I can make a bee. It's, you gotta get the wings. Uh, oh, okay. Bee. I'm a bee. Bzz, bzz, bzz. See you in a few. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, 
Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. Keisha Jones tied the strings of a large white apron carefully behind her back. She glanced at awe at the gleaming silver countertops and appliances in the kitchen of a cupcakery where her brother Robert worked. This is amazing. Yeah, pretty great Myers letting us use the mixer and stove. Pretty great, you're helping me. Keisha offered to bake cookies to raise funds for the new marching band uniforms. Even better, she convinced Robert to help her. He clipped the smudge recipe page over the counter. Brown butter and toffee chocolate chip cookies? Sounds weird. Trust me, they are the bomb. Robert worked evenings in a bakery for three years, so Keisha had to admit, he probably did know. She looked over the recipe. Two cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt? Actually, we're quadrupling the recipe, so that's four teaspoons of salt. Robert tossed Keisha a set of measuring spoons. Cookies are supposed to be sweet. Won't the salt ruin them? Nope. Salt actually brings out the flavors. What does that even mean? You want to test it out? Fine. I'll make a batch with salt. You make one without. You're on. The siblings worked quickly as Robert showed Keisha how to mix dry ingredients and wet ingredients separately. What do we do now? Add the dry ingredients into the wet mix on low speed. Slowly, or you will make a flower storm all over this kitchen. I knew that. As Keisha worked, though she began to hear another sound over the mixer. Wow, rain's really coming down. Yeah, and this is such an old building that every time it storms, the power goes out. I can't see a thing. Robert fumbled with his phone until the flashlight came on. It always comes back on pretty fast. We can wait it out. Robert settled down on the floor, back against the cabinets. Keisha sighed and sat down too. She checked her phone. My battery's dying. Entertain me. What? You can't live without your phone? I don't know. Tell me a story. I was just thinking of one about salt. Really? One that Jesus told. Ooh, that one. Sermon on the Mount. Well, it fits, you know. The cookies. Fine. Read it to me, preacher man. It's in Matthew. I know that. Robert settled in with his Bible app. Jesus saw the crowds, so he went up on a mountainside and sat down. Then he began to teach. And pretty quick he gets into this part. You are the salt of the earth. That's it? Well, no. I mean, then Jesus talks about throwing out the salt if it loses its saltiness. How do you even know if you're salty? I think it's like the cookies. Salt makes things taste better. And people who follow Jesus can make life taste better. Mmm, like chocolate chip cookies. Robert punched her lightly in the shoulder. You know what I mean. When we share God's story, we bring hope to others. We help to fill their lives with kindness and joy and peace. All that good stuff. Okay, okay, I get it. Salt, good. There's something about light too, right? Yep. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. People do not light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they will see the good things you do. And they will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. Keisha shifted, trying to get comfortable on the hard floor. So when we follow Jesus. By showing God's love to others. When we do that, others can see God better and what to do. Like a bright light. Yikes! Robert leapt up to try to stop the mixer as the power came on. Keisha stood and stretched, blinking. Like a bright light. You planned that, huh? Of course. Well played. Hey, I'm going to put salt in my batch of cookies after all. Well played. As Keisha measured the salt, she smiled. The cookies would have came out great, but she had some thinking to do about ways she can become salt and light herself.
Hmm. A six-legged chicken. It's chicken for everyone. Sheep that can shear themselves. <laughs> A pair of glasses that'll let you see behind you. Oh yeah. <laughs> Beef jerky made out of chicken? Novels. The best idea yet. Ah, oh, where do they come from? <laughs> so strange. Clothes that are made from other clothes. Pat Sajak, scented deodorant. <laughs> Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and we're wearing an awesome mustache. Yes, we are. Why? Because we're chefs, and every self respecting chef has a mustache. Gordon Ramsay doesn't have a mustache. Okay, that's one. Bobby Flay, Emeril, Martha Stewart. Subpar chefs. They're like the most famous chefs in the world. Below par. Okay, who are the, the above par chefs then with mustaches? Chef Louis. Chef, Le the guy from The Little Mermaid? Uh -huh. That doesn't count. Oh, okay, what about uh, Chef Remy from Ratatouille? Oh, no, no, no. Those are whiskers, plus he's a rat and a cartoon. Uh. Doesn't count. Aha! Uh -huh. What about the greatest chef in history, Chef Boyardee? He was a genius. <laughs> okay, you got me there. Mm -hmm. We're dressed like this because we are making an old family recipe today. Snickerdoodle soup surprise? Not your family's recipe. Uh. An old family recipe from someone who knows stuff. Ooh. Bonjour. Come on in, have a seat. Oh, this is cool. Tell us who you are and what you know. I'm Madeleine Lemold, but I am called Maddie, and I know quite a bit. I know every winner of the Tour de France for the last two decades. I know how to put together a Bugatti racing engine. Oh. But I am most known for what I can cook. Great! You're a cook! <laughs> Quoi? No, 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 no. I am a chef. And, by the way, I do not have a mustache. Oh, it, it suits you. Merci. So, uh, what, what are you going to cook for us today? Le poisson! Le poisson? Ah. Le poisson! Oh, I love le poisson! Oh, me too. <laughs> but no. We are making a 250 year old recipe passed down in my family for generations. Ooh, sounds mysterious. What's the recipe for? French fries. You know, I heard that uh, French fries actually originated from the country of Belgium. Oh, so they're really Belgian fries. Yeah. No, they are French fries. Yeah, but if you look on the internet... They are you... French fries. Okay. Some people like to peel the potatoes. My family's recipe leaves the skin on. Now we cut them. All right, where do we... Voila! Start. You batter the fries. All right. Oh! This batter is what makes these french fries so special and so delicious. <laughs> this batter is made with flour ground from the wheat kernels from the finest wheat fields in France. <laughs> and then we add a precise amount of white grape juice squeezed by and directly into the bowl. Mm. And then, of course, this batter contains the perfect blend of our secret family herbs and spices. Mm, yum, better up. You yep. put the duck fat in the pot. 
All right. This is duck fat? Yes, of course. <laughs> what else would you cook in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brandon. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, Chef Maddie, uh, is there uh, is there like a recipe or something in a cookbook or on the internet that in case anyone wants to try this the at home? The internet? A cookbook? Quoi? No, 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 no. This is a secret family recipe. I was taught this recipe by my father who learned it from his mother who learned it from her great aunt who learned it from her great grandfather, Chef Jean-Baptiste Honoré Le Monde. Did he have a mustache? We do not tell people the secret of the recipe because then, then everyone would know it. Well, I just thought that if the recipe is, is so delicious that you would want other people to know it so they could, you know, share in the deliciousness. Huh. This is something I have not thought about. It, it has always just been a recipe passed down in my family. <laughs> well, I can't wait to pass it down my throat and to my belly. So are we going to cook these Belgian fries or what? Yes, of course. You must bake them bit by bit at 375 degrees until they are golden brown. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Aren't you, you're sticking around to watch us cook them, right? Oh, I'm afraid not. No, I... I do not think I can keep this recipe to myself any longer. Everyone should know, no? No. I mean, yes. I mean, what? Be on the lookout for Chef Maddie's cookbook where all of my secrets will be revealed. Magnifique! Oh. Bye! She didn't even say bye. Well, she's in a hurry. Do you, you want to put these in the oven? Wee <sighs> wee. Oh, you speak French now. No, 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 no. I, uh, I have to tinkle. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <sighs> ah! Oh! I have to tinkle and put on some skin. Ow! It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, what's that delicious smell? Oh, we're cooking up some French fries, Kellen. Yeah, they should be ready by the time the story's over. Mm. Well, let's get to it. The story today comes from Jesus' most famous sermon in the Bible. And since Jesus preached this sermon from the side of a mountain, today we call it the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon from the Mouth? I thought all sermons were from the mouth. No, the Sermon on the Mount. It's short for mountain. A short mountain is called the hills. Okay. So everyone, this is my friend Horvath. Um, I'm guessing he's here to help me tell today's story. Thank you for having me on your shows, Kellens. I am Horvath, and I am an expert in combining the mental trainings of learning the Bible with the physical trainings of making your muscles bigger. Perfect. So I'll tell the story, and Horvath, you give us some exercises to help us remember it. All right, let's do this. Okay, so Jesus was talking to a crowd of people from the side of a mountain. One of the things he said to his followers was this, you are the salt of the earth. Ah, first exercise. Okay, we are going to make salt for the earth. All right, so I put my hands on my hips like this and then rotate around. Click, 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 click. This is called the salt grinder. We do it 24 times. Ready? Go. One. Click, click, click. 14. Click. Click, click, elastic girl, click, click, click. Three hole punch, click, click, click. 24, hey, we made salt of the earth. <laughs> okay, that was fun. Yeah. But what do you think Jesus was talking about when he said you are the salt of the earth? Yeah, so when Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, I'm pretty sure he wasn't saying we actually taste like salt. But salt is used to make food taste better, and salt is used to keep certain foods fresh. So maybe if we're the salt of the earth, Jesus was saying that we have the opportunity to make the world better somehow. You see? Ah. <laughs> mm. Okay. Um... Jesus kept going. He said, you are the light of the world. Ah, second exercise. 
We are not salt anymore. Click, 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 click. We are lights. So let us pretend to be lighthouses. Stand straight and rotate your head like a light all the way around. I call this turn the lights on. We do it 137 times. Go. One. 26. Grape nuts. Uh, Willie Shoemaker! Uh, uh, 137! Oh, what's next, Kellens? Right. So first Jesus called people who followed him salt, and then he said we were light. Well, what do you think that means? Oh, no, don't, 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 don't do that again. No, no, no. Here, uh, maybe this will help. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. People don't light a lamp and put it under a bowl, right? Right! Right. Instead, they put it on its stand. Then it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they'll see the good things you do, and they'll bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. I think I understand! You do? No! Ah, that's okay. It can be confusing sometimes. Jesus was saying that if you are someone who trusts and follows him, you should live in such a way that brings light into what can sometimes be a dark world. You should be looking for creative ways to do things and creative ways to love others. And when we do that, it will point others to God. All right, let's do this. Seventh exercise. I call this one ladders to heaven. So we can point people to God's. Okay, so we raise our hands and legs is at the same time, just like we are climbing the ladders to heaven. And then when we reach the top, we point like this. Huh? Okay, we climb 45 of the ladder rungs. Go. One, 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 six, 45. Now point to God because he is the most important. Ah, ah, ah. I think I need to take the elevator. Ah. Good idea. Bye, Horvath. <laughs> Boop. Going down. Ah. 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 Well, just in case that wasn't clear, it boils down to this. You have the light inside of you, and it's up to you to decide how to use it. You can keep it to yourself, or you can let it shine. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kellen. Hey, what are some ways we can shine our lights? Oh, there are so many different ways because everyone is so different. Sometimes it's as simple as being nice to someone. Anyone can do that. But sometimes you need to use your own unique talents and abilities to point people to God. What's important is that you don't keep it to yourself. I mean, do you ever think about how you'd feel if someone didn't point you to God? I'd feel so left out. Yeah, Jesus has been such a big part of my life. I want everyone to know him. Exactly. You're the best, Kellen. Thanks for shining your light. You bet. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Let's do it. All right. Reveal the question. Who first told you about God's story? What a great question, because those were people who shone their light to us. For, for me, it was a, a, a guy named Brett in my senior class at high school. Oh, cool. For me, it was my, my grandmother. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. For me, it was my mom when she took me to Sunday school for the first time. Awesome. Are the fries ready yet? Oh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yum. Oh, yum, too. That's so yum. Oh, these are amazing. Yeah, <laughs> good. We got to tell people about this. I think you're right. I think we should. No, now. We need to tell people right now, hey, everybody, you got to try this. Okay, we'll see you guys next week for another so-and-so show. Oh, it's all gone. Try it right now. Right now. John. John. I'm ready to get I'll be running. You do the spin. <coughs> all of them. Okay. 
Jesus said that I am a light. He said that you are a light and we should let our light shine so others can see it. And when we shine our lights, it will help point people to God. So how do we shine our lights? Well, we can give someone a helping hand. Oh, 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 oh goodness. Oh. We can cheer someone on. You can listen when someone else needs to talk. That's my ear. Listening. Only you can shine your light the way you can. So get creative. All you have to do is treat others the way Jesus did. Love people, serve people, and treat people like they matter. Then you'll be giving people a glimpse of God's story. You'll show people how much God loves them and how much they matter to him. Here's the one thing to remember today. God created you to share his story. Tell people with your words what God has done or use your actions to point people to him. No matter what, let your light shine. I know I'll never forget that. I'll see you next time. Oh, it's too bright. It's too bright. Ugh. Bye. Ugh. Okay. God made us to share his story in all kinds of creative ways. He wants everyone to know the amazing story of how much he loves us, so much that he sent his own son, Jesus, to be our savior. It's the greatest story ever and he created us to share it. Let's talk to God and ask him to help us to do just that. Dear God, thank you for creating everything we can see. Thank you for creating me. Thank you for creating everyone in this room. I know you created us to know you and you want the same thing for everyone in our lives. Everyone will ever meet. You want all of us to understand how much you love us. Help us use our creativity to shine our light for you as we share your story. Help us to tell others about you with our words and with our actions. We love you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to close our time together with a prayer slide for you and your family to share. We will see you next week.